Welcome to Arnhem Land. Isn't this magnificent? We're a couple of hundred kilometres northeast of Catherine at the moment, and this is where we're going to be holding the best four wheel drive of 2008 competition. Actually, this is round one of the competition. We've got five magnificent four wheel drives. We're going to be putting them through their paces in the heartland of Australia. It really is fantastic country, true outback experience here. It's going to be absolutely awesome, and you're coming along for the ride. Well, what a trip this is going to be. We're going right up into the heart of Arnhem country, right to the, the headwaters of the Catherine River. It's a place rich in culture and natural beauty. And like all great journeys, you've got to start somewhere. And the best place to kick this one off is the TJM four-wheel drive mega store in Darwin. That's where we got our maps and had a look at everything because that's where everything you need for a trip like this is going to be. We'd assembled a great team for this trip, a really good team. Mark Allen from Four Wheel Drive. Oh, me, what a waste. Warwick Grimway, TJM Ken, Slav Stefanovic. There's Andrew from Berrima Diesel. Oh, and hello, there's our lucky bugger. Steve Furlonger from Storm, and finally Matt Strudwick. Carrying our houses for the next three days with us. Here's the house here, look at this beauty. We've got so many bags of gear here, we got hit with huge excess delivery fees at the airport. And that's what happens with such big trips like this. Mountain of gear. Loaded up with everything except grog. It's dry country. These vehicles all have a heap of gear in them and it almost replicates what you re really will be taking when you go away on a holiday with the family. Load it up so the vehicles will act like they would when you're driving them. Craig's wedding anniversary today and he's up here with us. <laughs> Any words to the wife? Happy anniversary, dear. <laughs> it's going to be all the better because he's not there, eh? <laughs> Every person gets given a full spec list. There's prices, there's carrying capacities and everything here. That way they don't have to ask me all the questions. Before we go, we're going to check the vehicles out on the hoist at TJM. This is an integral part of any of our tests. We want to know what they look like before we take them out there and rearrange them. No, we're looking for things that hang low, departure angles, things that might break, the sort of stuff that rocks can hit. You need to know these things before you take them out. And you need to know how they go when you get them back. The trip from Darwin down to Catherine and on to Arnhem Land was about as easy as they come. We stopped in at Catherine, did a big shop, Everything except grog because we're going into dry country. Before long, we were out and heading towards Manyalaluk, Aboriginal tribal land, well and truly to the east of Catherine. It was an awesome experience turning off that sealed road and knowing that as far as we were concerned, all we're going to do is head northeast. First stop on our trip, first camp out of town, was at the Manyala Luck Aboriginal community. And they've got a wonderful place to camp there. Lots of green grass and a beaut waterhole. What a sensational spot. Uh, it couldn't be better than this. Kids are kids, aren't they? No matter where you are. That's the freshest water and the sweetest water hole you've ever been in. Made better by a few hundred k's of dirt to get there. We've got Big Al and Brendan from Venture North. They're coming along as our tour guides, bringing the 100 series and a trailer full of gear. Ah, oh, we like to eat well on the road, you know.
You know, it's really nice for a change for me to be able to look at some damage that we didn't cause. On its way here, the Prado hit a couple of roos. Because it didn't have any frontal protection at all, because it didn't have a good bull bar that would deflect the roos to either side, it wrecked the front end of the car, it punched the, um, fortunately it didn't damage the radiator, but I noticed it did damage the uh, windscreen wiper bottle. Um, so there's some internal damage there too. It's that close to doing some serious damage, it wasn't funny. We've already replaced the frontal section of the car just so we can bring it on test. And then the other day the plastic started to rattle too. That's when we noticed creases all the way down the side of the, of the truck because the roux wasn't deflected properly. Now, there's nothing else to do really out here except to cut this off and keep on going. We've got to do that. We've got to trim it up. But it really does show the need for good frontal protection. So you make sure before you come out here that you've got bar work on your truck. Gee, you wouldn't let this bloke operate on you, would you? He's as rough as bags. Who taught him how to panel beat? Like to see you do that with Milo, mate. Now we're ready to go and have some fun. Marcus Ashley is a full-blood Aborigine from Manyalaluk and he came along to show us a whole new dimension on this Arnhem Land caper. This is his people's country and they know where all the sacred sites are and all the special places too. Seeing this wonderful country through one of the actual landowners themselves, I guess that, that just opened up the whole world for us. Here comes Warwick in the 79 series. This TJM truck is equipped to the max, and by crikey, didn't we need it. As far as recoveries go, not many people know more about this sort of stuff than Warwick. I'll tell you what, this is a really tough way to make a living. I love it. I would like to point out that Slav was driving this before me, and he probably did the damage. It is no, true! No, it is true! Ha. I've never done Kill anything! <laughs> Don't listen to him, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Marcus along, we were able to access all sorts of hidden places, we really were. This waterhole on the way up was just something else, it really was. Rock art all around, it's obviously a very special place for his people. And we all learnt so much from Marcus. Real life testing, like what we're doing here in Arnhem Land, is the ultimate way to test all these four-wheel drive vehicles. It's real life situation, 
All the vehicles are loaded up with all our camp gear. It's just like what you guys at home would be doing if you were coming on a holiday here or anywhere else in Australia. You know, one thing I love about the territory when you come up here, you're so uh, insulated. Even though we live in a rural area south of Sydney, we've got black snakes and you know life-threatening animals around there as well. But when you come to the territory, you just have that sort of, uh, I don't know, that threat to your life, sort of you're part of the food chain type of uh, feeling. You know, you can't just jump into every creek that you see. You've got to take responsibility for your life, which I think is missing a little bit nowadays. And uh, just think twice before you do certain things. I'm sort of looking obviously for a specific type of vehicle and uh, that would be obviously something that would uh, carry along the kids because I've got two kids. Something that's probably not too expensive, not too complicated. Well, I'm down to two and they, I don't know, they start with uh, P, but there's uh, another one there that I'm thinking about. So, yeah, you know, it, uh, it's getting getting close. Another, another couple of days of getting dirty and dusty and if no more pieces have fallen off some of those vehicles then I'll be able to get a little bit closer to it. This is the first time I've been on one of these trips and it's, it's three days into the trip so far and it's, it's, it's one experience of a lifetime that you just don't get the opportunity to do. I thought it might have been sort of bush tracks and which is what they are but the, the, the bush tracks are just so picturesque and the, these vehicles are just, they're all really comfy, they, they do what you expect them to do and we've got to pick the best one out of them. That's not going to be an easy task. Do not, if you do nothing else, get yourself a four-wheel drive, get your tail out here and enjoy this. Just look over my shoulder and have a look at this damn country out here. It is just mind-blowing. We've seen stuff out here that, you know, I, 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 I've seen a lot of Australia and this, what I've seen out here has just been up and away. Some of the Aboriginal art we've seen has been fantastic. The, the, as I said, the people have been absolutely wonderful. They've, they've been most hospitable out here. Look, it's one of the greatest things that we've ever done is we've been involved with the Express people and uh, do this four-wheel drive here because it's a real-world test. Unlike some of these Ertzart ones you see in the magazines, which are, are quite pretenders, th this is a real test. I'm quite taken aback by this so far, and we're only a few days into this test, and it's just fantastic. There are some superb water holes all the way through Arnhem Land. Special places, well and truly hidden, right off the beaten track. But by crikey, what a way to cool off at the end of a hot day. And these water holes, oh, they just surprise you. They're so beautiful, just like the rest of this land. How good is this? Hours and hours of driving, 35 to 40 degree heat. You get to a water hole, beautiful. It makes it all worthwhile. More great customs later, but next we see how things are going on Best 4-Wheel Drive of 2008. Australian 4-Wheel Drive Action is Australia's leading 4-Wheel Drive magazine with over 20,000 subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, you're missing out. Be part of the 4-Wheel Drive Action family and get all the latest 4-Wheel Drive news and happenings before your mates. Simply free call 1800 801 647 or visit www.fourwheeldriveaction.com.au and receive all the benefits by subscribing today. Oh, there's nothing like waking up in the morning when you're right out in the outback. Just a beautiful day, the air is crisp. Just a bit of a chill. Having Big Al on breakfast really helped. No end. Nobody went hungry, not as long as he was around. Oh no! Oh, no.
Even if he was a bit of a dab hand at making the omelette. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh, scrambled eggs. Excellent. <laughs> oh, and the stars last night. Mate, you can't buy a hotel this good. <laughs> Same thing. I mean, I had a beaut night's sleep. Oh, it's peaceful out here, isn't it? Fantastic. All right, well, let's bring on the dancing girls and do it again. <laughs> Thanks to the Venture North boys, we really ate well on this trip. Some of us even put on weight. Uh, who would that be, I wonder? What are these? Where did they come from? Oh, no. Hey, Slav! Slav! Are these yours? If they're not yours, whose are they? Um, yeah, right, eh? Well, I was just about to check the oil anyway, so uh, how convenient is this? got Andrew Lemroth here from DP Chip. He's just checking this uh, new Land Cruiser V8 turbo diesel. Just making sure all the settings are correct. We're gonna fiddle around with a few things here just to see if we can improve the fuel economy. Obviously most people can't do this when they're out and about. Andrew's got his laptop here. We're gonna hook it up and uh, see what we can find on him, mate. Well, I know what you'd find on my laptop. It's not nice. So it's that quick. Andrew's just reprogrammed the DP chip through his laptop, he's plugging it back in. We'll spend the next day driving and see what the difference in power outputs are and also fuel economy. After copping such a hammering on the way up to Darwin in the first place, the poor old Prado was the first vehicle to cop some major damage when it popped two of its alloy rims on a hard corner. Bit of a sharp rock, wang, bang, thank you ma'am, it's all over, two flat tyres and two badly stuffed rims. Most people would have a couple of spares, but we only had one per vehicle, so we had to sort of shuffle them around a bit, that's when we found out the patrol wheel had fit on the Prado. That's okay, we got two wheels on, we got it going again. But it's one of the reasons I don't like alloy rims out in the bush. You can always straighten a steel one out, you know, do something to it to get going again. But then they rust and they're heavy and I know all those other things. I guess it's all up to uh, individual like, isn't it? I've had uh, the, the good opportunity to have tested all these vehicles previously. Um, on the criteria that we set to be 
a family vehicle that had to tackle an around Australia trip. Um, you got mum, dad and a couple of kids to throw in, plus you all your camping gear and it all adds up. Mate, my number one choice would be the Big Patrol. Uh, it's got the room inside, it's got the solid axles front and rear, it's got coil suspension, it's got an economical and powerful diesel. Um, it is not the fastest vehicle out of the lot. Um, it is not the quietest vehicle out of the lot. But the whole package to me, that's the one that I'd put my family in to take me around and I'd be pretty sure that I'd come back safe. i will probably go to the Patrol. Being a tighter man, I'd still lean towards the Patrol over the Prado, just because it's a bit bigger. It's got the solid axle all around. Yeah, it's good coil sprung. Okay. The Hummer doesn't appeal? The Hummer, even though they, it's the third Hummer they've made and they got smaller every time, it's still too big. I still think it's too big for Australian. Like a Land Cruiser is big and that's just big and be even bigger again. Looking at it from a Data 3 perspective, the Prado. The Prado? The Prado. A bit smaller than the Patrol was Patrol was a very close second, uncomfortable back seat. I'd have to go for the Nissan Patrol. Just following it, it's still sort of a vehicle that's a heavy duty four wheel drive. Uh, when you're touring around these sort of things, around you'll have a fair bit of camping gears, a fair bit of weight in the vehicle. Um, it's a vehicle that's built to carry that sort of gear. Um, and it's just a very capable four wheel drive, it has been around for a few number of years, so it's had a fair chance to get the bugs ironed out of it. Uh, actually, I'll have to go with the Prado, I think, this time. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's probably gotten to a, a good point, obviously, being in the field that I've been in. You've sort of seen vehicles come along and grow and grow and mature and manufacturers sort of listening and, you know, fixing little idiosyncrasies. I would have quit work, I would have left work, I would have done anything to be able to come on this trip. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I've been driving a great vehicle and, yeah, it's been pretty good, good people to work with. This is absolutely sensational. It is the trip of a lifetime. It's to places I never ever would have dreamed of coming to. And, but yeah, at the end of the day, these vehicles, uh, they're, they're, they're nothing like four drives of yesteryear where you can pretty much guarantee that they will break down. You have to be very hands-on mechanical to fix the things. Whereas now, mate, these are so reliable, these cars. Uh, and you can call some of them cars. They're so comfortable, they're quiet, they're smooth, they're economical. Um, and they are reliable. They're all reliable vehicles. It's just that some are a little bit more standout than others. It's, it's pretty extreme testing. I mean, we can just see where we, what we've done to get here. And it's been a, a tough effort to get here. So I, I take my hat off to all the vehicles that they've really done so well. Well, it came pretty close to a punch up around the fire and the next morning too. But it, we did have to decide on a winner. Whoa, I tell you what, it wasn't an easy decision. It really wasn't. But at the end of the day, with everything up and counted and decided and thrashed out, you've got it. The Patrol, the Nissan Patrol, comes out just that little bit in front in virtually everything. It's such a good truck, it really deserves to go through to the big final shootout with the 200 series Land Cruiser that you might get to see next month. Same time, same channel.